Hello everybody, my name is Eric and today we're going to be talking about the situation with Marvel Rivals, which is a reasonably popular game that's come out that has a remote code execution vulnerability. Now if, you wa if you've watched this channel for a while, you know remote code execution vulnerabilities are increasingly a problem with video games. A lot of games are not developed with security in mind, there are a couple of reasons. One of them is sort of a cultural problem in the industry. The other big reason is because games are very uh, performance sensitive. And as a result, they're generally going to be written in memory unsafe, non garbage collected languages like C. And uh, it doesn't really work well with borrow checking. So there's really no good memory safe way currently to write these games. And it's just not an industry priority. So you can end up with dangerous things. So this is Marvel Rivals. I'll actually show you in a bit the proof of concept that was shown for this remote code execution vulnerability. And what I believe is happening here is somewhere in the system that checks the patches, and we're going to see if we can find this in Wireshell. The game is not encrypting everything properly, and as a result, it's possible to replace the code. Now this does require network access, and what I was mostly concerned about, and what has been confirmed, is this would also only work if you're if you're on the same local network. It's not like the Call of Duty one, which simply requires being exposed to the internet. And here is the so-called loading bay, and we'll just install this, and then we can install the game, and we'll see what happens. Now this was discovered by Shazath here. He found a game exploit that lets hackers take over your PC. And I'll show you exactly what happened, and then I'm going to try and reproduce this. So the setup he's got here, uh, he has a tool that is scanning for packets. So presumptively, given he mentions this is being done over Wi-Fi, uh, my assumption is he's using monitor mode. I actually made a video showing how this works, where if you're on the same Wi-Fi network, you can use monitor mode to intercept unencrypted traffic. Now hopefully... Uh, you'd think, well, they, would, they wouldn't they would allow this. Well, there's a specific vulnerability he's discovered within how they encrypt it. So I'm going to go ahead and approve show that this. and sign away my computer to the game. That enables injection of a Python script. Okay, so at this point when I click start, it, the game is going to start commuting to the, the game server, and I'm hopefully going to be able to see it on my my system. So I, The I moment was he able clicks to... start... The decryption key to sniff these is decryption sent. keys and encryption keys uh, to inject this this Python script, which will pop a window up here in a second, and then that runs. So the mistake that this company seems to have made is not being strict enough, because the Python functionality is presumptively available for the purpose of enabling updates. It's perfectly normal for games to have automatic over the wire updating. But in this case, it was able to be taken advantage of. So I would say this is a medium severity exploit. This is certainly not as bad as the Call of Duty one I covered. I, I would say uh, that you should never play a peer-to-peer -peer multiplayer game, which this is not without a VPN for a number of reasons. It's not as bad as that. It is bad. Now there's a lot here that doesn't obviously make sense to me. Now I don't know, and I will try and reproduce this in a minute, but... What I'm not understanding is presumptively he's using Wi-Fi with monitor mode to sniff the key. But how, like my rough understanding here is there's an SSL issue. So how is this a remote code execution? Is he MITM'd the guest? Because that's a very different issue. Like at that point, it's basically a privilege escalation more than a remote code execution. But I'm going to take a look in a second. It also seems from when I was doing research on Marvel Rivals that... The anti-cheat isn't very well implemented, and interestingly this game doesn't use kernel level anti-cheat, although as he does point out, uh, it does do something that really should never happen, and that is the game process is running as admin. Not kernel, but admin, which is in most cases just as problematic. It's very common for the anti-cheat to be installed as a service that runs with that level of privilege, but you would almost never want to run the game code for the sake of not having needless privileges. So there's another strange decision that's been made here. Now while we wait for that to download, let me just run a quick message from our sponsor. One 2025 trend I'm certainly no fan of is internet censorship. Unfortunately, a combination of well-meaning but troublesome and downright despotic legislation has been making the internet a less 
usable place in many countries. That's why this video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Surfshark has over 3,000 servers in 100 countries to let you see any content you'd like, regardless of local sensors. In addition, your computer's IP address is concealed, so the operator of any websites or game servers you're using can't see where you're really based. And you don't have to worry about IP leaking exploits and DDoS attacks. They also have a new feature that is invaluable when doing undercover research, Alternative ID. Alternative ID lets you easily go anonymous and undercover online by providing an alternative name, email address, and physical address for accounts you don't want to tie to your real identity. If this sounds exciting to you, you can get started at surfshark.com slash ericparker and with my coupon code, you'll get four extra months of Surfshark free with any annual or biannual subscription. Now back to our main programming. And now we're ready to go. The game has downloaded. That didn't take that long. And we're ready to play. Now we may need an account. So uh, let's test out this anonymous ID thing. Now we can sign up with Koi52 at coldfishgateway.com. I actually like that. And now we get to the actual stoning game prompt. So here we go. And the game does run with administrator privileges. Good design. Even if a game needs... A kernel level anti-cheat should not do this. It should be set up as a service. That is why when you play Valorant uh, or any game, whether it's got kernel or user mode anti-cheat, you do not have to elevate it every time. That is already very questionable practices. So we'll elevate it. We just got detected. Oh, that's interesting. Wait a second. What? Oh, I need to update my QEMU. Okay, and now we should have everything back to normal. Let me just double check. Yes. And while, while troubleshooting that mess, I also uh, decided to look through the actual game files, and we can see, yes, that these are clearly Python compiled. So the launcher is in fact written in Python, which is why loading arbitrary Python is even a possibility. Now, if this was designed in a sane manner, that wouldn't matter. But it seems that there have been some interesting security choices made here. I guess the people saying there's no kernel anti-cheat here, because it doesn't say on Steam. Uh, that seems to be completely false. I, this is an interesting idea. It's a form of security by obscurity. Because I was trying to see what was in this updater, and we discovered this interesting VM-protected DLL and a .sys file. Uh, now, the reason this is getting detection is obviously it's not malware, I mean, unless you just don't like kernel line cheats. Uh, the reason this is getting detections is because the, I assume the sys driver is signed, but the DLL is unsigned, which is extremely unusual. Once again, it doesn't mean it's dangerous, it's just not professional. I, I don't like the idea of injecting an unsigned DLL. And now I have got the game running in the VM. Uh, of course, I'm not allowed to say how I did that. Uh, there's some stuff uh, in, in my school, uh, but I, I can't promise anybody that there is any way of playing a, a game on a VM. Uh, but for the sake of getting it to launch to test a security issue, uh, here we go. If this is going to behave as we expect it to, I'm just going to make this windowed so that this is easier for us to see. Why am I not able to do that? Oh, there we go. <laughs> just gotta hit the shortcut and that works so if this is to be believed the moment we hit that uh, a handshake is made that is not secure i think we can close this now and i'll stop the recording and save it okay we're gonna try that one more time just to see uh if now that we got the account it behaves a bit differently uh, what I did see and was able to confirm from looking at MITM proxy is that there is absolutely zero SSL certificate verification. So that is, to my understanding, where the problem comes in. Now, it's possible that it is relying on the local computer's trusted SSL certificates, at least. That would be a step up. Uh, but let me just double check that's right. Yeah, so we do now have our that installed so at least it is potentially checking that although the exploit showed by the other guy would imply that it isn't i was just i wasn't sure i, I can try it uninstalling the mitm proxy certificate to validate that but what should happen here and what would happen if instead of this we tried uh, something uh, we tried a different it would not work because this type of app especially if you're going to remote execute code uh, with only this as your protection, what should happen 
is it would be checked against a known because you should know if you're if you make an app you know who's supposed to sign it and if somebody else is signing it instead uh, that means that something has gone horribly wrong. Really, I could go on. I mean, it's ridiculous to have uh, the ability to execute arbitrary Python code. I assumed that was because the guy who made the video had installed Python, but no, that is actually seemingly the update mechanism here. I have never seen anything like that. You should. Uh, there's really no scenario where you should have arbitrary remote code execution on purpose. Like the one that we showed on Call of Duty, that was not intentional. That was a ROP chain that enabled the guy to drop executables. Okay, shouldn't be able to happen. Uh, here we don't even, there's no ROP chain here. There's just a very bad API. Now, I uninstalled the certificate. So if the game doesn't complain about not having an internet connection, okay, okay, that's good. So that's being checked. Now let's see if we can log in. Oh, yeah, uh, looks, so that is the mistake. Okay, so there are, there are two really, really bad uh, design decisions that were made. The game client does not appear to properly check if the certificate is, is valid. Now, just to confirm this, because I did have an idea that maybe it was just caching the SSL, um, I have rebooted the VM and I'm trying again. Now, initially, the first time I tried to log in, I thought maybe I'm wrong because it did actually throw an error, but then I click try again. We're still on the MITM proxy with an untrusted certificate. We can verify that because, uh, see, here's Discord just throwing a dev null. So I'm just going to make sure the game isn't doing something weird with offline and that we actually will uh, match make. But uh, just to validate that there is not some janky offline mode, just for 100% certainty. Because I'm kind of baffled that this keeps working. Oh, well. Okay, that kind of proves that... But let's see if we can get around that. So no, there there isn't some janky offline mode. That was my only thought. I guess we could try it at a different time just to further confirm whether there is or isn't a janky offline mode, but there isn't a janky offline mode. Uh, this is exactly as uh, weird as it looks. The other weird thing is the launcher would throw an offline error when we had MITM proxy on, but then the game would launch and it would work perfectly fine. It's really weird. Okay. So that confirms that there isn't a hidden offline mode. I mean, I realistically, we knew that, but I just wanted to... I, I always like to make sure I'm not getting things wrong. So there we go. So the magic uh, is, it seems, that Novel Rivals doesn't check SSL. Now, because uh, the researcher hasn't shared how his proof of concept or how he made the video, we can only guess. And he says this because of risk of exploit. I, I think that is a factor. I do think, and I don't mean this in a mean way, but I, I do think this is a bit exaggerated in terms of the level of risk. Is this a, a horrible screw up? Is, is this embarrassing for the developers? Yes. Is this something that it has a real chance of causing a non-trivial number of problems like the Call of Duty one? No. Not unless there is a trick here that I'm not seeing, because in reality, saying you got to be on the same Wi-Fi network is an understatement you would have to compromise the Wi-Fi network. This is similar to the Qubit Torrent one. Oh, right, yes, I actually disconnected from the internet. I actually forgot about that. So there was a Qubit Torrent exploit where Qubit Torrent was not checking SSL. And as a result, because Qubit Torrent had an auto updater, just like this game does, there was a potential remote code execution there. It's a problem, and it does matter, and especially in something like Qubit Torrent, which might, which especially because people uh, are might combine Qubit Torrent with a very questionable uh, free VPN that might be doing questionable things. There's there's a few sites I have seen people talking about. Uh, they're not commercial. They're just like they're just people sharing VP open VPN IPs, and to me that is a really dodgy idea because if you don't know who's running them. So that kind of thing, I can see it. So how do you mitigate this? I guess we should go. Now, obviously, and I don't mean because of the sponsorship, but yes, a VPN is an option. If you're on a website, if you're on a Wi-Fi network you don't trust, yes, using a VPN can reduce your risk. 
There is, of course, the counterparty that because the encryption would only pass that far, yes, if your VPN provider is evil, they could remote code execute you. Or if you're not using a VPN, your internet service provider could. Is any of this likely to happen? Probably not. What should happen? Uh, Netties should learn how to check SSL certificates. This is probably a one-step fix for them, and I imagine they will do it, especially in the interest of their anti-cheat, because not only was I able to observe all of the packets the game was sending, I could see the I could see the anti-cheat stuff as well, which in the interest of preventing cheaters is not helpful. Now that does have its own encryption algorithm, it's base64, and I, I don't I didn't go all the way down the rabbit hole. Seems like there's a lot of improvements here. I would also say that intentional remote code execution is not a good thing. Okay, you can have patcher. I don't think shipping arbitrary Python code over the internet that can do anything running as admin is acceptable. And that's my opinion. I would suggest that Netties work to fix this. So do you uninstall Marvel Rivals because it's a risk? I don't think so. And the other thing I thought I would address because it was in the comments of the original video is playing uh, is this some sort of uh, chinese attack no no I, I don't think they may made it vulnerable on purpose of course with this design whether it was vulnerable or not they could ship malicious code very easily but so could any game publisher because if the publisher wanted to do something evil they don't have to make it vulnerable they can just ship the evil code uh, so I, I don't think that one holds any water so that's my opinions and thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do leave a like and subscribe if you did. Let me know in the comments if you want me to check anything else. I do agree, game vulnerabilities, growing problem. Uh, game companies should take things more seriously. That's all from me for now. Bye.